Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider in that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from the Am I Wrong subreddit and says, Am I wrong that I broke up with him without warning? And before we do get into the story, I just want to give you a warning that it does contain talk of attempted suicide. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. My ex-boyfriend is making my life miserable. So here it goes. I-23 female was in a relationship with Chris, 26 male, for four years. We were best friends. Everything was perfect like a fairy tale. We both had well-paying jobs and we had a great apartment. I mean, it was his, but I used to pay half the rent. I thought this was it. I definitely knew we were going to get married, but then tragedy struck. One of my co-workers got fired from their job because she filed a harassment case against our manager. I knew he was capable of doing it and she had proof, so I backed her up. But then she got fired from work and I knew I was the next one to get fired. Everyone was talking about it. All of us knew I was getting fired and that eventually happened. But I was not sad. I was already searching for a new job and told my boyfriend and he was very supportive. That night he went out with his friends and he asked me if I wanted to come but I was tired. Everything was fine. Two days later I got a message from his friend. He said my boyfriend slept with his girlfriend. At first I thought it was a prank or a joke but no, he was right. He told me that they didn't have an affair, but they did sleep together. It was a one-time thing. He even showed me the photos. His girlfriend confessed to him as she felt guilty. He broke up with her and asked me to do the same. I was shocked and I didn't know what to do. I thought of asking my boyfriend. Then I got a message from him saying, I want to talk to you. He said he'll come home and if you're at home, stay there and I'll be there in 15 minutes. This confirmed everything. I was crying and I packed my bags and all my stuff. I left a note saying, I know that you cheated and I'm breaking up with you. I did this because I didn't want to face him. If I stayed there, he would have manipulated me. He always did this when he wanted something. I went to my sister's house and went to sleep. I switched off my phone, told sister everything and said not to tell my boyfriend I'm here. He was calling everyone in my family and friends to ask about me. I already told my family. My boyfriend even visited my sister's house. I think he knew I was there. My sister kicked him out. I was totally numb. Didn't know how to feel or what to do. I was not even crying anymore, just sitting there total blank. My sister's boyfriend told me I can stay there as long as I want. He is a great guy. A few days later, I was waiting for my sister and suddenly my ex-boyfriend came there and sat next to me. Here's how the conversation goes. He said, hi, how are you? And I said, good. As you can see, he says, you're looking great, looking very beautiful. I said, what do you want now? You cheated and are now here to tell me the reasons or excuses. He said, I didn't do it on purpose. It just happened. I'm sorry. I will never do it again. I love you. It was my biggest mistake and I was not in control. You can slap me or punish me, but don't leave me. By the way, he was crying uncontrollably during this, but nothing really worked for me. He was begging literally. I said, okay, I forgive you, now leave. He said, but what about our relationship? And I said, what relationship? I told you I'm breaking up with you. You asked for forgiveness and I accept that. He said, you can't do this. You know I messed up and I'm regretting it now. I'll die if you didn't come back. I said, I don't really have time for this now. You asked for forgiveness, you got it. Now there's nothing to talk about. I left as I was barely controlling my tears. I was just putting on a strong face to show him. He came again the next day in the same discussion. A week later, he said I left my things in his place. It was a frame filled with our pictures, which I gifted him. He was doing that on purpose. I took all the pictures out and kept the frame. Every day, he is here. Yesterday, I told him that stop doing this. Nothing is going to happen. Just go and accept the truth. Today, he didn't talk, but he was still there. I was out shopping and... He was everywhere, like every single store I went to. I certainly don't care, but that's weird. He's just following me at this point. I don't want to see his face every day. I cry like every day at night, and seeing him every day makes it worse. 
He's ruining my life at this point. He's saying I broke up with him without any warning. So am I wrong for not waiting for his explanation? Now, as for the title in itself, you're not in the wrong in the slightest. He cheated on you. What the fuck was he expecting? As for the rest of the post, it sounds rather concerning that he's turning up everywhere that you are. Every shop you go on, you go in, he is there. Obviously, I'm not sure where this comes from in, in terms of country in this post. And I'm not a legal expert in the slightest, but restraining order is coming to mind. As I said, I don't know of the possibility of that, but if he's turning up everywhere you go, not leaving you alone, it is rather concerning, right? But Lil says, he cheated without any warning. You get what you give. On the other side, I didn't handle my last breakup well. We were still constantly communicating for a month after and I was going insane. After that, we went no contact and it's been six months and now I'm in a healthy place again. I know it's not in your control, but try to do anything and everything to maintain no contact. Eventually, hopefully, he'll lose steam and go no contact. Opie says, I'm doing my best. The thing is, he knows everything about me, so he knows where to find me. So far, I think I should go on vacation. But you know, vacation is all well and good. You should absolutely treat yourself and get away from this and give yourself some headspace. But in the long run, I don't think it's going to solve the underlying issue here in that he's stalking you. Savings You says, how does he keep getting into your sister's house? File a police report. He's stalking you. OP says, no, he doesn't visit her house. He often comes when I go out. I mostly walk the dogs and do some work. I didn't tell my sister because then she had not let me out and do everything herself. I can't cook, so she'll have to do that too. I didn't want to be a burden on her, so I walk the dogs or bring some groceries. He often follows me during that. And again, that is just bloody creepy behavior. That means he's watching the house. He's watching your schedule. That's 100% stalking, man. But one more comment which says his obsessive behavior is rooted in self-absorption. It's about what he wants, not reality. Same thing that made him cheat. He's not rooted in reality. He's rooted to his emotions. He wanted to sleep with someone else and wasn't focused on your needs or the reality of the relationship. Now he wants to ignore your needs and the reality of the broken relationship to focus on his emotional needs. It's about his short-term needs. A guy who can be seduced away from a relationship is a guy who values sex more highly than he values a relationship. This could have happened when you were married with children. That's a learning experience preparing you for a man who wants all of you. The life you will build together and not just a part that satisfies his short-term needs. You might have to threaten him with police involvement. There's absolutely no reason to have to live like you are. Worried that he's constantly obsessing and following his unacceptable behavior. So after the comments, Opie updated it in the same post and said, thank you so much for all the suggestions. I'm going to get a restraining order. I also called his friend whose girlfriend who he cheated on with he said will surely help me my sister's boyfriend is coming back tomorrow also we're going to my sister's friend's house to sleep just for today as we're alone in here her husband is a cop update the girl who he cheated with just called hours ago she and her boyfriend got back together they're going for an open relationship and apparently my boyfriend convinced his friend to forgive her my sister totally went nuts on that bitch but why is his friend still talking to him and he also wants to help me? Are they all together and making a fool out of me? My sister did record the call. I know it's not needed, but still. Why did his friend do that? Or maybe he's planning something else I didn't know. I know this is not necessary information for my case, but this happened and I thought I'll share. Sorry if you feel this was not relevant and I'm getting a restraining order. As of now, I have not gone anywhere. Sister is still with me trying to cheer me up. So OP does update the post and he said, first of all, thank you so much guys for all this support and advice. A lot of people ag agreed with me that I did was the right thing. I didn't owe him anything. He messed up the relationship right when he cheated. Also, someone said it looks like it was written by a kid. Sorry, English is not my first language, so I tried my best. I slept most of the time today as I was a little down. When I woke up, my sister's boyfriend was here. My sister told me when I was asleep, she got a text from my boyfriend. She showed me the messages. It was a long text, basically everything he wanted to say. I'll just write the important things. He started with the cheating part. He said, I'm ashamed of myself. How did I do this? Blah, blah. But he's still adamant on, I didn't do that on purpose thing. He regrets everything. He's written some details of what happened, but I don't feel comfortable sharing that. 
Ben said he didn't tell me because he thought I'd leave him. That means if his friend had not told me, I would never have known he cheated. Most interesting thing here is that he's still pushing that I was not in control as a reason. So he added that his friend and girlfriend got together because they genuinely love each other. They wanted to solve this issue and they looked past the things and came to the conclusion that the relationship is important. They know everyone makes mistakes. Everyone deserves a second chance in life. Their relationship is strong, so they survived this disturbance. He said, I'm throwing away four years of a relationship for a mistake that he clearly regrets. Who's throwing it away? The cheeky bastard. He understands that my trust is broken, but he'll try to gain it back. I don't know how he'll do that. Following me doesn't make me trust you, buddy. He said I'm angry and hurt, and that's why I took those decisions and left him. I should have heard him first, then have taken the decision. His uncle has been sick, so he's going to visit him. What he's saying is, I get a lot of time to think when he's gone and try to understand his situation. He's always around, so I'm bothered with him. He said our relationship didn't have any troubles before because we understand each other. That's what relationships are. If everyone thinks like me, then no couples would have stayed together. Every relationship has flaws, but it survives because they are willing to make sacrifices and that he still loves me very much, will do anything to get me back. He can even wait years for me. He will not follow me again, but he wants to talk to me after he comes back. Yay. Good luck with that, Chris. My sister's boyfriend said he thinks that my boyfriend is not going anywhere. He just wants us to think he's gone so that we can stop thinking about involving the cops. Then we get relaxed and he'll start doing that again. He's clearly trying to act innocent. Honestly, even if he's telling the truth, I have made my decision and I'll not change it. Regarding the restraining order, we discussed everything and figured it out. I didn't get much time today because my sister's dog got a massive diarrhea, so we cleaned the house and took him to the vet. He's okay now. So that's all that has happened. I'll update you guys if anything happens again. Thanks for supporting me and showing your concerns. Now, OP mentioned in the very first post, and we do have another update, by the way, about his manipulation tactics, and he's, you know, done this in the past and whatever, and he always tries to manipulate him himself out of situations and that's all i could think about whilst i was reading this post you said about his uncle has been sick so he's going to visit him i'm not sure whether that was a lie or not or maybe he was just using that as an excuse but when you said that he may have been saying that just so you can stop involving the cops i absolutely thought that as well and you should continue getting that restraining order telling you that you're throwing away four years relationship also comparing your relationship to what they have done saying you know They've come to the conclusion that their relationship is important. They know everyone makes mistakes and everyone deserves a second chance in life. And their relationship is strong, so they survived this disturbance. It's just all bullshit manipulation tactics. What an ass hat. But OP did update the post and says, So, it's been a long time. For people who don't want to read the previous one long story, short, my boyfriend cheated on me with his friend's girlfriend. I left his home with a note that I'm breaking up with him. According to him, I didn't give him a chance to explain himself. Then he stalked me and made everything worse. Lots of things have happened since then. My ex didn't contact me for six days. No calls, no messages. I really thought that he was finally gone. But on September 1st, around 9pm, I got a call from one of our mutual friends saying that my ex tried to commit suicide. His friends were there and they stopped it. It was a mess, but he's fine now, just hurt a little. I was scared and crying. Never thought he'd do something like that. When I was a kid, my neighbor had killed herself and I didn't take it well. I was traumatized since, and I'm very sensitive. I cried the whole night and didn't sleep and didn't eat. Next to a common friend, she visited me after seeing him. She told me that he's okay, but he looks like he doesn't take care of himself. Also, I was called a whore, a bitch, and many other names by his friends. She said I should go see him. My sister disagreed with this as it will give him hope that I come back to him. My sister, she called my mum and told her everything. They know how I take these things after my father passed in 2021. I was depressed. I literally gave up and didn't eat. I was just sleeping and not talking to anyone. It was very hard for me to leave it behind. I got my life back together after all that just for this to happen. My mum said she will fly here as soon as she can. She came here in three days later with everything ready. She wanted me to go to Boston with her, as my uncle has a house in Boston. His girlfriend was there. He bought it when they were together, now they're broken up and the house is empty. He uses it whenever he goes to Boston. 
He often says to all the relatives that if you want to go there, you can live in my house. He told her that we can go there for a few days. Mum wanted to take me out of here. She was not wrong because my birthday was in a few days. I didn't want to go because I have everything here, but I guess it's time to move on. So for my ex, I left him a voicemail and a card. I know it's stupid of me to do that, but I can't leave like this. I'm in Boston right now with my mum. My sister didn't leave, so she's going to be there with her boyfriend. I also feel sorry for all the trouble I caused them. They're going to come here as it's my birthday tomorrow. I really don't know how to feel. I just want to be alone, but I can't say anything as I don't want to ruin or spoil anything. I've done enough. I don't have a job. Lost my four-year relationship. I have to start everything from the beginning now. At least my mum is here. I'm not feeling good here, but it's time to accept it and continue. Maybe things will get better. I wish. And I hope you do realize, OP, that none of this is your fault. You didn't cause any of this. He made the decision to cheat. And I know we talk about no contact a lot within these stories, but I absolutely think it's time to do that. Go no contact with him. Go no contact with his friends who are blaming you for what I don't know whether they have the full story here or not, because you know anyone from the outside looking in on this and seeing that you was the one who was cheated on here. What are they getting at you about here? I just don't understand that. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story is from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit from GoodSort7315 and says, Am I the Arsehole for hiding my savings from my fiancé? I recently got engaged to my fiancé after two years of dating and told her we should probably start looking at houses. She told me that we didn't have the money for a deposit on a mortgage, but I personally have a lot of money in savings. It's a little bit more than $160,000. My girlfriend was initially just shocked because it is a lot of money for a 24-year-old to have. I've been extremely lucky in life. After a couple of days, she began to be annoyed at me. She felt like I was hiding this from her. I told her that I didn't hide it from her. I was just raised to not talk about personal finances with anyone other than someone you were married to. And I figured engaged is close enough that I'm happy to talk about it. I also said that I had actually used these savings to help her before. I've paid her rent a few times when she couldn't and paid a couple of thousand dollars for her dog to get surgery. She was still quite angry and has been giving me the silent treatment for the past day. My parents don't see the problem. Duh. Her parents understand my perspective but think I should have told her when we moved in together last year. None of our friends know because I don't feel comfortable talking about it with them. I've already asked her if we can talk about it when she's ready and she just said she'd let me know when she was. I don't think this is relationship ending, but I know she probably wants me to admit I was wrong. I don't think I've done anything wrong. So I'm asking you guys more so out of curiosity for what others think. But Jilly and Nav ask some info. They say, you say you don't talk about personal finances, but you moved in together a year ago. Did you talk about bills and finances at that point? Did the discussion cover anything beyond simply assigning responsibility for certain bills? E.g. you pay for electricity, she pays for cable, etc.? Most important question, did you willfully conceal, omit the truth, or directly lie about your savings? Then says edit based on OP's answers, not the arsehole. And OP's answer was, I never lied or specifically concealed it. There are moments where I probably could have brought it up, but didn't feel it was necessary. When moving, we discussed how we'd pay for rent and other things. I make more money, so I said I'd take on more of the financial responsibilities. I pay for three quarters of the rent and the groceries. Everything else is 50-50 beyond just what we currently make per payment cycle. Nothing else was discussed. Femi Nerdy says, I don't think you're the arsehole. In that, it seems a bit strong of a word based solely on your post. At the same time, it's also fair of your fiancé to feel upset you waited so long to trust her with the truth of your financial situation. Because regardless of how you were raised, you made a conscious decision to not share it with her during any past discussions about the financial realities of cohabiting the future you guys want to build together, etc. I think you need to take accountability for that, apologize and ask what she needs from you to be able to move forward and feel like you trust her again. Impossible Trainer says these Reddit comments are already making her a gold digging whore. Like, come on. If she were a gold digging whore, she wouldn't have been with him in the first place because in her mind, he didn't have any money. I think her problem is that she thinks that you lied to her or maybe that you purposely hid it and 
she thinks that you may be hidden other things too, but that you didn't trust her till now to talk about big things. Or maybe she is embarrassed that you can help buy a house and she can't, and that's why she is angry at herself. Pinebox waiting says not the arsehole. Why exactly is she upset? You need to ask her this and then listen closely to her response. She may think that because you have a comfortable savings, you should have been paying more of the rent or bills. This isn't true. You pay your way with your earnings, not your savings. Knowing about your savings should not change any part of her life at all. So why is she mad? What difference does it make? If anything, this is a happy surprise. Had you been drowning in secret debt, she would have reason to be annoyed. As it is though, what's her problem? So put yourself in the girlfriend's shoes in this situation and let's say your partner suddenly revealed that a large sum of money, $160,000 in their account, two years into the relationship, engaged, would you be upset about that at all? Do you think it would affect you? Do you think you'd get upset if they suddenly revealed this out of nowhere? Do you think maybe they didn't trust you with that information initially? What's your thoughts on that? Let us know down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. Truly, you're absolutely amazing. And hopefully, we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.